Hey everyone, welcome to March. I can't believe it's March already. Um, this month I wanted to share a whole bunch of uh, tools, techniques, ideas around learning. So that's learning for individuals, um, learning for organisations. This month I really wanted to dive in and give you a whole bunch of inspiration around where you can go to build and cultivate um, yourself as a learner. Uh, your team as learners and your organization as a learning organization. So we've got lots of ground to cover. Um, I'm stoked to have this opportunity to share a bunch of ideas with you. So um, you'll get a whole lot of ideas. Um, there's activities, there's reference material. If you're not on the mailing list already, make sure that you hit me up either with a comment um, or join via the website and I will make sure that you get the monthly journal I actually package all of this information up into a little booklet for you. So um, if you'd like a bit more detail, there's exercises and things in there that you can go to and you can build like a monthly transformation journal for yourself. So without further ado, um, I wanted to get started this month talking about how humans learn and the learning cycle. So um, if you've worked with myself, uh, if you've been on a retreat and had the pleasure of meeting my good friend Amanda from Soma Psych, um, you'll know that the pair of us love nerding out on brains and what brains do and how they function um, and how do we get the most out of ourselves. Uh, and so this concept that I'm sharing with you today is called Kolb's Learning Cycle and it's about how we learn as individuals. It's this idea of um, understanding the model for the way in which human beings process information and learn from that. And I got it from a really, really cool book called The Art of Changing the Brain by James Zool. Um, super cool book. It's actually aimed at teachers uh, and it's aimed at teachers to learn the biology and the what's going on in the brain to help them better enable all sorts of different types of learning styles within their classrooms. Uh, super, super cool book. It's actually one of the foundations for um, a lot of the experiential learning um, activities that we do when you come on retreat with us. So um, the learning cycle is pretty simple. Uh, there's four parts to it. And if you've used models like check, plan, do, uh, then you'll notice some commonality. Uh, it's coming from similar roots, right? And it's actually based in the biology of the brain. So the first step in Kolb's learning cycle is around concrete experience. It's around having an experience that could be a conversation, that could be reading something, um, that could be hearing a sound out in your environment. But there's this concrete experience that you're picking up through your senses. And then what happens is that we move into a phase of reflective observation uh, and we start to try and make sense of those things that are, that are happening to us. Um, the third stage is what we call abstract hypothesis. So this is where our brains start to come up with solutions based on the input that we're getting, the sense that we've made of the situation. We start to build solutions and ideas in how we are going to respond to that. And then the fourth step, which is the really, really critical part for learning, is what Cole calls active testing. It's this idea of putting all of that stuff into action. And action's critical to close the learning loop. So whether that be uh, responding to that email that you've had come through your inbox, whether that be um, moving a post-it on a wall in the office, whatever that is, the closing of the loop with physical action is really, really important. Uh, and this is, this is kind of interesting when we start to get into the office environment, right? So what's really cool about the learning cycle is it actually maps to the different parts of the brain that are active during each of these phases. So when sensory information comes in, it enters the what we call the sensory cortex. Um, this part of the brain is it's responsible for all the direct physical experience, the sensory, sensory information. So whether that's coming through sight, sound, touch, smell, um, that the, the information comes into your brain and that concrete experience is built up of sensory information, sensory input that comes in. As we move into the next phase of learning around reflective observation, then we move into activating a different part of our brains. Um, the back part of the integrative cortex is where we make sense of that information as it's coming in. So this part of the brain lights up when we start to um, form memories. It's about identifying objects, faces, 
Uh, it's the creation of uh, meaning. So that sense making that happens in that part of the brain. Step three, as we've started to build a picture of what's coming in to us, as, as we've started to kind of analyze the information that's coming in, then we move into the building, what we call building of hypotheses. And we actually start to engage the frontal integrative cortex in our brain, which is responsible for short-term memory. It's for uh, responsible for assembling language, for making plans, um, recalling past experiences. So we might look at, has this thing happened before? Is there some, some in commonality that I can draw on from my past experience? Uh, putting together images and language to start to create new constructs. So it's the, the putting together the pieces of the puzzle. And then the final stage, uh, we enter into the motor cortex of the brain, which is the part of the brain that's responsible for that action. It's, um, that action is critical to complete learning, and it could be as simple as uh, writing the response to the email. Um, it could be as big as taking some physical action within our bodies. Um, but that motor contact cortex is responsible for coordinating all of those voluntary movements in our body. Um, so that could be debate or conversation, um, as physical actions, doing experiments, all those sorts of things. That comes out through the motor cortex. And then the cycle starts again. So then, based on that action, um, we will have another bunch of sensory input coming in. And so it's this constant looping of uh, information and sensory input coming in making sense of that, starting to put some constructs together around how we respond, and then physically taking action to close that learning loop and the cycle starts again. So, um, as, a, as, a, as a real concrete example for you, if we are in an office environment and we hear or maybe we see some words written down, that's the concrete experience piece. Step two, as we start to remember related words or ideas or images and start to kind of put that together, um, that's that reflective part. Step three, we might generate words or ideas in response, that's the abstraction layer that's going on. And step four, when we are speaking or writing new words or ideas, that's that active testing phase because we're putting something out there, we're waiting to hear or see the new words uh, and responses that are coming back from our colleagues, that equates to new concrete experience and the cycle starts again. So this is something that's happening all the time. Uh, it's, it's not something that we necessarily are very conscious of, but we are constantly cycling through these phases of uh, making sense, integrating information in our brains and learning on an ongoing basis. And so the question really is, how do we enhance that? How do we identify areas where we might get, be getting stuck? And how do we build in um, or nurture those opportunities to grow in some of those areas that maybe we're not quite so strong in. Um, and you can see how this model would overlay really simply into an organizational construct. So metaphorically, we can start to think about what's that concrete experience that's coming into the organization. Now, um, a lot of times that might be things like revenue numbers, uh, but like what, what is that concrete information that's coming into the organization? Uh, and then as we start to move through making sense of that numbers, those numbers, maybe we're putting context around, um, you know, there's a marketing campaign that we've run recently that's resulted in, um, in some of that growth. Maybe we're starting to understand where are those other situations where we've seen this uh, increase in our, in our revenue numbers or, the, or this decrease. Um, we start to go through making sense of that, putting together a construct that says, hey, we're noticing this correlation between this type of marketing campaign and this type of increased sales opportunity. And maybe we go back out and we produce another of those marketing campaigns um, and, and put that out there. And, and the hypothesis being that that will increase our sales again. And so we're still going through these cycles on an organizational level, but that's where it gets really interesting about understanding where you might be weak or where you might be stuck in each of those uh, phases of the learning cycle because if you can start to diagnose that then you can start to go and build that muscle because as human beings we're doing this all the time very naturally but in organizations we need to probably put a little bit more conscious effort into each of those phases so that we're building that loop because it's very easy for those loops to get disconnected 
um, or for the the noise and the and the crowding to come in with all of this sensory information that we're that we're taking in all of this information from different avenues in an organisation. Uh, and so probably the the last thing that I wanted to share um, is that when we're going through these learning cycles, the first groove is always the hardest. If we're learning something new, if we're trying to make a connection for the first time, that one's the hardest because it's a bit like a track through the forest. The first time you cut a track through that, through that forest wilderness, there's roots, there's fallen tree branches, there's a little leaf litter on the ground, um, there might not even be any visibility of the track, but you may, may know that there's a point up ahead that you're looking for. That first kind of cut through is really, really tough, right? But the cool thing about reinforcing these learning cycles and reinforcing these loops is that once you make that first connection, the second time you walk through, maybe the grass has been pushed down a little and you can see the steps of, the, of, of where you walked last time. Um, maybe you pulled a couple of branches from one side to the other and the path starts to clear a little. And as you go through and repeat these learning loops and you, the, that repetition that's associated with further investigation, um, you know, further action, taking in more, more sensory information down a particular avenue of inquiry, as you start to repeat that, then the groove gets deeper and it becomes easier and easier to walk down that track the second, third, fourth, multiple times. So I wanted to share that with you today because I know that certainly in my corporate career, learning was never something that was taught to me um, as, as in any kind of training, any kind of um, sort of subject matter deep dive. It was just expected that we would quote unquote build a learning organization. And um, sometimes I find the theory and the ideas behind this stuff useful. So um, certainly for me, it's fascinating that when we're building these models for how we learn, it's related to engaging different parts of the brain as well. Um, and that if you are mindfully, consciously moving through those different spheres, um, then there's a whole kind of world of stuff that's going on within your team um, and within your organization. So I hope that was useful. And your homework for today is to go and have a bit of a look, write that learning cycle down. So remember from step one, concrete experience, sensory input, whatever that looks like for your organization. Um, step two, taking that reflection time and that observation, looking for patterns, looking for maybe where this has come up before, making sense of that, that raw data that's coming through. Two, two distinct steps, right? We can often push those together when we're working with organizational data. Uh, step three, we start to form those hypotheses around if we were to respond to this information, what, what action would we take? Step four, taking that action and then waiting for that sensory input, waiting for that experiential input back again so that we can formulate the next round of hypotheses. So your homework today is to go and start to map that out. What does that look like for your organization today? What are all of the areas that you get that sensory input from? Where is that information coming from? What are the relevant sources? Maybe where are some of the gaps? What are some of the senses that you're missing in your organization for feeding the data for your decision making? Um, start to map out where and how you reflect and analyze. Um, what are your methods for analysis of that information as it's coming in? How are you actively formulating hypotheses? What's the process by which you do that? So not simply the answer that you come to, but what is the process by which you come to answers? Is that predictable and repeatable? If you were to feed the same information in um, on, on more than one occasion, would you get the same output? Or is there variability in that process of how you start to formulate those hypotheses? And then step four, how are you taking action? What are you actively experimenting with today? What are you actively working on? What's out there in uh, production, in market, that is driving that next round of sensory experience? What's your process, again, for getting things out into the wild um, where you can get that feedback from customers, where you can get more of that sensory input? That's your homework for today, is to go and start to map that out and look at a really honest reflection of where you're strong in your organization and maybe where you're really weak and where you could start to build more of that muscle in each of those four stages. So I hope you found that useful. Um, and wherever you are in the world today, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, hit me up with a comment below. Drop me a line if you'd like to join the mailing list, and I'll make sure that I get the monthly journal out to you with all of the activities and the exercises in it. Have an awesome, awesome day.